guys and girls, my name's Dan, welcome back to The Forge. In today's episode of Trust Me I'm a Blacksmith, I am gonna show you how to make a soapstone holder a bit like this one. Okay, welder's chalk, soapstone holder, thingy for holding things. This is the project for today. Um, I'm going to be not only giving this away, but I'm gonna tell you how you can get hold of the kits in order to make this and a couple more objects at the end of the video. So watch the video and then at the end of the video, I will tell you how to get your hands on this object. First of all, well not this one, the one that I make on the video, this one. And then I'll also tell you how you can get hold of the material and the kits to make all of these projects that I'm gonna be doing as part of a stay home, stay safe, uh, coronavirus thing. So I'll see you at the end. So for this project we're making the soap stone holder and for this um, the kit comes with a piece of 25 by 8 mil mild steel. There's about 450 millimeters of it in the uh, kit which is an uh, inch by uh, 5 sixteenths. There'll be a piece of chalk in there, a couple of pieces of chalk and there'll also be a 16 mil or 5 eighths um, section a uh, piece of forklift tie which has been forged down. This is a bit of scrap uh, that you can make into whatever, whatever's left. But for this, we need to make ourselves a couple of bits of tool in, in order to make this. Uh, there's more than enough in here to make two of these little objects. Uh, it doesn't use very much material in all, at all. It uses a, just over three inches of material uh, in total. Uh, so we need to make a piece of tooling that we can use in a vise. That's the only other piece of tooling that we need for this project. Um, and the uh, piece of tooling needs to be just slightly bigger than a piece of soapstone or welder's chalk or whatever you want to call it. Now, um, I tried measuring this earlier and the closest measurements that came out were imperial. So it was half inch uh, by three sixteenths, which uh, works out of four and a half mil by twelve and a half mil, roughly. Uh, we want this to be a little bit larger, the tooling, so we don't need to necessarily be bang on those measurements, uh, but the closer we can get, the better. So the first... Okay, so I've got the the, uh, the uh, 16 square uh, hot, and I'm just gonna start drawing it out. Can you use a stick? You don't need a special hammer. Or any special tools to do this. And you don't need very much material, you just need you just need uh, enough material to cover your chalk, which we're gonna need about an inch and a half, um, 40 mil. Okay, so I pulled a little bit of a taper onto this material, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come, I don't know, two inches or so, this is a bit rough. I'm just gonna start putting a set down in. And I start forging that down flat. I don't want to um, flatten the thickness, that's not necessary, but what I do want to do is um, I want to keep the shoulders square. So basically I want square corners and square edges, but it doesn't need to be the same width as a piece of chalk. If it's a bit longer that also helps. Okay, so I've got my material nice and hot again. Just going to take a bit of the uh, the wax out. Just want this to be nice and even inside. And just going to forge on the back end. I'm not going to forge anywhere else. This last inch or first inch to the set down. Make sure it's all nice and tidy. Okay, there we are. So I'm quite pleased with that. If you wanted to, you could run a file over this and um, tidy up some of those edges and stuff, but there's not, it's not necessary if you forged it nicely. Um, however, I am going to draw this back end out into a handle just very quickly under the power hammer. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna forge uh, a ring on the end of this bar. This is the one that I drew out for the, uh, for the bit of chalk tooling. And the reason I'm doing forging a 
poop on the end is because um, I never make very nice tools. Well, unless I'm making videos. If I'm making them for myself, I tend to make horrible ones and I've promised myself I won't do that anymore. But what we want to do is this is kind of how, and I'm going to use a jig later to do the um, to do the uh, stoke stoke holder, but this is how you want to go about doing the turning up. A process of using the the bic or horn uh, and a combination of using stroking uh, stroking the hammer across the material. Um, I'll get a close up now and I'll show you what I mean. I'm not using the bic as a form. I'm not trying to match the shape of the bic. What I'm trying to do is use the bic as a point. So basically I'm going to rest this somewhere where I want it to bend into and then hit it and move it into that bend. And the same this way. I'm going to just use it to move into that bend. Okay, it's looking pretty smart. Okay, so I've just put the uh, tooling to one side to allow it to normalise. So basically got it up to uh, above a critical temperature and it's slowly cooling down now. Um, whilst that's cooling down slowly in atmosphere, I'm going to mark up the mild steel bar. I'm going to come 60 millimetres or 2 inches and 3 sixteenths uh, from one end. I'm going to put a mark with me, uh, me chalk holder and then I am going to just blow off any residue. I'm just going to put a line across and then I'm going to take my centre punch. This is not the centre punch we'll be making as part of these kits but it's kind of what it would look like. I'm going to take my centre punch and then put two centre dot marks either side of the line at each end. Um, and these are going to be the indicators for where I need to neck down the material to make the little arm. Now as you can see, this little arm is quite long, so there's a lot of drawing out to do. So if you've already practiced some drawing out on your tooling, that's good. Uh, we're basically going to be going for almost exactly the same design here on this. Uh, okay, I've picked this task because um, initially drawing out or forging is a very difficult process for people to get to grips with. Um, so what I want to do is I want to walk up to my marks and I'm going to start by drawing the end out and getting rid of some of the material out of the way, get it done. Okie dokie, and then I'm going to come up into the anvil face and I'm going to work a little bit on one side, I'm going to turn it over and work on the other side. Now, I've lost a little bit of heat because I was chatting to start with, but I'm just going to continue to walk up onto those center dot marks like so. So, I'm okay. Okay. so there's no need to rush through this air section. I'm just going to come in. Oh, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to hold myself tight up against the anvil. Use the heel of my hammer. I'm just going to get that mark. Just going to just catch off that mark. I'm going to flip it over. Same place again, and do exactly the same again. Just walk in with the heel, heel in that hammer, walk it in. Square that material back up, and do the same again on the opposite side. Now I know everything's in nicely, and in the right place, I'm just heaving that hammer in. Okay, I'm gonna flatten that out a bit, bring the material back in. And then I'm going to go back to uh, bringing that heel back and getting in there nicely and putting that nice shoulder in. Same again on this side. And once you start to develop that shoulder, it becomes easier and easier to get on it. Okay, so if like me, I'm a bit one-sided, I'm going to bring that up onto the anvil and bring that shoulder in a bit more, same on this side. Like so. So I'm just going to square everything up. 
and just uh, make sure everything's in the right place. When it comes to drawing out material as well, there's no one way beats the other. Um, there are some definitely more efficient ways of working. I won't dispute that. However, there's no magic hammer, there's no magic anvil, there's no magic technique. The only thing that they all have in common is practice. Practice definitely makes perfect. Good practice, at least anyway. So, when you're doing uh, these projects and you're saying to yourself, someone said the other day, oh, I get bored of drawing out tongue veins. The only way that you can guarantee instantaneous speed increases is by mechanicalizing the process. A rolling mill, a power hammer, a hydraulic press. After that, hand hammer, hand anvil, and a bit of graft. Um, what I'm going to do is about two thirds of the way or about a third of the way from this transition point I'm going to put a mark with a center dot and then I'm just going to gently taper this off into a nice thin flat taper and that's the bit that we're going to wrap up and bend round. It's going to hold our chalk. I filed this down and I've got this all looking nice and tidy. That's going to do our keyway. That's going to uh, go in for uh, making the slot for this soapstone um, and it's pretty close. I think I've got somewhere in the region about a quarter of a mil each side, so probably less than a 30 second there, um, which is really good. So I'm really happy with everything as we are at the minute. Okay, same as before. I'm gonna start this end. I'm gonna start up on the bit. I'm gonna start flattening this material out a little bit. And then I'm probably gonna come halfway between where I've flattened and I'm just, going to work a little bit less material and the reason is I want a nice gradual taper to this roughly where I put that mark which is about, which is about a third of the total length of the material just going to start drawing that down and then squaring it all up and as you'll notice this is falling off really quickly now I think some of the best advice that I was given as a student was um, setting up a target. Have that material at the end forged close to where you want it already and then just try and get everything just to flow into it nicely for the taper. Okay, so the next job is to cut this off the bar. Now, the, the spike end is currently measuring about um, just, just shy of 300 mils so and nearly, nearly 12 inches long. Uh, and um, the the section here that I've measured off uh, is 40 millimeters or an inch and five eighths uh, roughly. Uh, accuracy isn't super important with this job. As long as it's comfortable in the hand, that's all that matters. It's the right size and the right weight. So somewhere around these measurements is gonna be really cool. I'm gonna chop this off the bar. I'm gonna get this other end hot and then we're gonna start forging this down into the section in order to hold the chalk. Okay, gonna use a straight peen for this next bit. Uh, just to start drawing the material out left and right. The straight beam is just going to let me push that material. You could use a normal hammer or a rounding hammer or uh, a cross beam. Would work. Um, diagonal beam. I just find that. Uh, see the same on the other side. Okay, it's all nicely forged out, nice and flat now. I'm quite happy with that. Um, it's pretty tidy. However, it needs a little bit of a tidy up, so I'm just gonna go over with the angle grinder. I'm just gonna basically clean up this end and make sure it's nice and square, and I'm just gonna tidy everything up, make sure they're all nice and smart. 
Um, I'm then gonna take some of these hammer marks out. You don't have to do this bit, I just want to. Um, and then just make sure this transition looks nice and smart. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a clean up with a grinder. And then we'll work on bending it up. Okay, so I've got here a small engineer's vise, a um, small mill vise. And then I'm gonna take my stretched out material and I'm going to do this hot to start with because um, even though the material is not much bigger, it will be a little bit bigger. So it's always best to do these hot because um, otherwise if it's uh, cold and you come to put it in when you've marked it up. Right, so that's what I'm going to have. I'm going to have my material inside the vise like so and I'm going to come in with the tooling I made. Now if you didn't make tooling like this, you've just got a piece of bar, you're going to have to hold that with a pair of tongs. But I'm basically going to be able to get that on top like that, get that attack with a hammer, and it'll all go through. Now, if you don't have a vise like this one, you can always use a vise, but you will need some sort of vise or something to get it started. Okay, so I know this is going to fit in here, I'm going to take this right up to that end. A couple of turns on the vise, make sure that the vise is holding it. I'm then going to drop my tooling in and then give that a good sharp crack with a hammer and then centre that back up again. A couple more turns with the vise and you do exactly the same with your and just keep popping that in until it starts curving up like so. Okay, so I am just going to grab this in the vise. Um, Hold it fairly central, grab it in the vise, give it a bit of a squeeze, like so, and then just make sure that this can still pass through. It can't. Let me just see if I can't get that to go in. This is a good thing about making a bit of tooling. If you've got any problems, you use the tool. To get everything nice and tidy then. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this out of the fire now. Take my tooling, I'm going to initially face the tooling down. I'm going to slide it on here. Okay, and then I'm just going to Just get that sat down so it's on there. Start pushing those sides over. Okay, so it's looking really smart. The chalk fits. Um, all I'm going to do is I just got a little bit of tidying up that I want to do on the transition. So basically, I want this to look straight. Um, it's, uh, it's not a big deal. It's nothing serious. Just want to get that transition looking a little bit smarter than it is. Uh, like so, and also it kicks off in one direction. Uh, so what, what I'm going to do, because this is mild steel, I'm just going to crunch it off a little bit up to where I want it to bend. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a tap and straighten that up so it's a bit straighter. I can already hear someone in the comments saying, "You said uh, you didn't need any special tools to do this." You don't. You don't. I've already shown you how to bend up uh, material. Um, if you are struggling with the bending process, I definitely recommend making some sort of jig. Um, you don't need to do this. I'm just jigging this because I want it to look really professional. And in order to do that, I need to use this bending jig. Um, if, you, if you're a home gamer, you don't necessarily need a bending jig. I use this jig for multiple jobs. do lots of different jobs with it. Um, and yeah, and I find them quite useful. Right, I'm going to get this hot again and finish doing this bend. And I guess that sounds a bit salty. It's not supposed to offend anyone, it's just the truth. If I can work it out, I'm pretty thick. Um, I'm pretty sure you can work it out. It's, um, it's basically trial and error a lot of it. Um, however, if you do not have a set of um, scrolling tongs, this is quite tricky indeed and um, I definitely recommend making some scrolling tongs in order to do this. It will make your life a lot easier. I have completely messed this up now. 
And okay, so by using some clever quenching, I'm just being a little bit delicate, I'm just gonna to push those in so they make a nice tidy circle. And then uh, basically just have a bit of a a bit of a fiddle with it uh, until you're happy with how it looks. It's um, because th there's tapers in here and all sorts of little things that are gonna just make everything super hard uh, just to get set up. You just kind of need to go with it until until you're happy with it, basically. And, uh, that might sometimes mean starting again. I need to get that bit out of there. Okay, and then the last thing that needs to be done before we can put a finish on it and give it a test run is we just need to curl this little finger over. Now, on mine I've left it sharp like this. Um, you can do whatever you wanted here to get those to go together. And then I'm just gonna give it a bit of a squeeze like so. And basically you just want that dipping inside the trough. Like so. Okay, so I've got myself a tub of linseed oil here. It's still a bit warm, it's probably a bit too hot for quenching off. I'm just gonna dump that in there even though it's gonna burn a lot of that oil off. It'll not only cool it down, but it makes sure all that oil gets into all those lovely spots. And now I'm just gonna give that a wipe with a rag. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make this. It turned out great. I've really enjoyed making it. And uh, there's lots of stuff in this that will really help improve your forging skills. Um, especially the, the, you know, the bulk of blacksmithing, which is drawing out and forging and moving that material. Um, it's small enough not to be a pain in the bum, but it's big enough uh, to get your skills really honed. There's plenty of stuff to do in this project in order to make you a better blacksmith. Um, there's little bends and stuff are quite tricky, doing the flattening and drawing out is quite complicated. This little bendy bit here is a little bit irritating, especially if you haven't got a jig. And just all round, there's plenty of little bits and bobs in here to make, make you think about what it is you're doing as a blacksmith. Now, I am going to give this one away to one lucky person. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about that, but first I just wanna talk quickly about the kits and what's gonna be in the kits and how you can get hold of them. So what's in the kits? Well, I haven't completely put a kit together yet, but by the next episode, I will have a full kit to show you. Now, what's gonna be in the kit? Well, you're gonna have enough mild steel to complete all of the mild steel projects, plus a little bit more so you can make some mistakes. I, ge I genuinely suggest that you follow me from beginning to end, because as your skills improve with the at, like individual projects, you'll make less mistakes, hopefully, fingers crossed. So there'll be enough mild steel in there for you to complete all of the projects. There'll also be enough material in there for you to make any of the tools that I think that you need to make the project. So one of the projects is a set of calipers uh, that you can use in your forge for measuring your material whilst it's hot on the go. And I'll make sure there's enough material in there to make all of the drifts that you'll need. However, things like punches and chisels and stuff, they're basic tools that I think most blacksmiths should have. And if you haven't got them, why not make them for the projects? Anyway, if I'm using tooling in the videos, there's probably a video on how to make it as well. So I'll also include all of the material needed for the medium carbon and the high carbon projects. So that is the center punch made of Damascus. I will include a kit that has the full Damascus. I will also include a kit that has um, a cable version of the Damascus steel. And I'll include a kit that has just a normal high carbon steel in order to make a normal center punch without doing the Damascus. The reason for this is twofold. Some people won't want to make Damascus steel. I completely get it. Um, Secondly, I don't have tons of steel at the minute and I'm really struggling to get hold of certain things and the materials in those projects I'm really struggling to get hold of. So I apologise, they may come around again in the future as full kits, but it will be listed in the, um, it will be listed what kit you are buying. So there'll be three kits available, one kit will be Damascus, one kit will be cable Damascus and one kit will be no Damascus. Obviously price will affect those quite a lot because some of the materials are scrap and some of the materials are bought in. That's just life, unfortunately. 
And that's basically it. That's going to be everything in the kit. I'll cut, chuck a couple of pieces of chalk in there. I'll also cut, chuck some of the springs and washers and stuff that I'm going to be using in order to make the calipers. Um, but that's it. There won't be anything else in the kit. Okay, enough talking. I'm going to tell you how you can win this chalk holder. It's simple. Basically, watch through the video and tell me the number of times I say chalk, whether I refer to it as a chalk holder or I just say chalk in general. Once you have your answer, don't put that down in the comments down below. That's not going to help you at all because I'm not going to pick you from there. You have to go to my Instagram and then put a comment on the post where I'm going to post a, a picture of me making this object on my Instagram. I'll leave the link to that post in the description uh, so you'll be able to find that super, super easy. And then in the comments there, write the number of times that I said chalk. That includes now. Cool, that's it, simple, done. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. And just quickly, I will ship this anywhere for free. It's only a tiny little object, I'll ship it for free. I'll send a couple of pieces of chalk and I'll chuck some stickers and a key ring in there or something as well, just to sweeten that deal just a little bit. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, please ring that bell for notifications. It tells you every time I make a video. And fortunately, I have been given the opportunity to still come up here. Um, Farmer doesn't mind being up here. Uh, I don't actually see anyone when I'm up here. I'm here on my own. I can self-isolate up here if I wanted to. Uh, everything's cool and happy and fine. So I'm good, I'm safe, and I'm gonna keep making content. That means the Etsy's still going as long as I can get to a post office and DPD will keep collecting stuff off my driveway. We're all good. So if you want anything, go and check out the Etsy link in the description. Instagram, like I've said before, I'm really trying to push that at the minute. I've been doing some really interesting stories. If you do make one of these, send me a picture. I'd love to see it. Let me know how you get on. Let me know if you found it easy or hard or whatever. Uh, and then, um, I will put, if you do it on Instagram, it's probably the best way to send me the picture. If you put an at and then my Instagram on whatever image you upload, I should see it and hopefully if enough people make them and there's some interest in it, I can put them up. I'll try and work out how to do it. Anyway, I can put you up in my stories or something like that. Anyway, I'll give you a shout out at some point. Please, please, please do that. I would really love to see that. Next video is going to be the center punch. I think that's everything. Yeah, Instagram, Etsy, blah, blah, blah. Yep, that's everything. Thank you so much for joining me. This video is the one that YouTube thinks is best for you. This video down here is the one that was most recent, and the one here is one that I have chosen that I think you might like as well. And that might be over my face. Use the subscribe button. Bye-bye.